All right, let's um, pick up where we left. Um, these are the examples. I hope that picture is clear. As, as you saw, we have three languages here. And what contrastive analysts would have done is, let's say you are an Arab who wants to learn English, um, they would compare the areas of contrast and similarities and then predict where you as an Arab would find a difficulty learning English. You are French, you want um, to learn um, Arabic. Where are the areas of differences? Where are the areas of similarities? They would compare and predict uh, how the learner would respond to the learning process. Same if you are a Latin Arab wanting to learn French, etc. Okay, therefore, um, what they did based on these um, um, analyses is that they have um, a lot of studies on a lot of uh, L1 and L2 combinations. They create something called the a hierarchy of difficulty. According to these proponents of the CAH um, hypothesis, they established a model um, uh, where they predict where L2 learners could uh, be expected to make errors based on the degree of differences and similarities in the structures of L1 and L2. What do you mean by this? They did careful examination of the structures of both languages, as we saw before, and attempted to determine which areas constituted a higher degree of difficulty or difference. Um, some differences are okay, but some differences are more difficult. Based on this, they created the model um, this is my representation of it, it's not in the book, but let's imagine it this way. We have six levels, level zero being um, uh, the easiest level. There's easy transfers between the two languages because they have a lot of areas of similarity instead of areas of differences. Um, and then we had level five as the most difficult transfer between the two languages. There are a lot of areas of contrast which make learning um, this, which makes this learning that language, that L2, for this specific L1, very difficult. Um, let's say someone who is um, Chinese wanting to learn Arabic. There's contrast in pronunciation, contrast in uh, writing, in the alphabets and characters, um, contrast in, um, uh, in structures, etc. However, maybe someone learn, uh, who is Japanese wanting to learn Chinese, the level would be um, easier. Level 5 is also called split, and what we mean by split is um, what happens when, when a certain structure in, L, uh, in L2 or um, it must be split in order to, um, to be understood. Example. Let's go back here to the Uhabuka um, example in Arabic. Uhabuka is one word. If I want to say it in English, I have to split it into three parts. Okay? One, two, three. Three words. But in Arabic, it's just one. I will be sharing an example with you from a word in the Quran. Um, I will share it as a post. And I want you to comment on, um, um, on the on the difficulty or the, to contrast how this one word is said in Arabic. However, if I want to say it in English, it would require me to use several uh, words. This is what we mean by split. And when you have to split, this is something that is really uh, difficult in language learning. In conclusion, the proposed hierarchy of difficulty allowed researchers to identify and predict, as I did now, uh, uh, areas where learners needed special instruction to overcome the errors they make. The CA approach is was successful and is important. However, uh, it was still flawed. There was um, um, a lot missing, and it uh, there were a lot of areas that were not covered by the CA approach. Um, predictions about similarities and differences. Uh, were generally subjective, that is um, unique to one person. Not all people who are Arabs will have the same errors that um, that uh, all. That is, not all Arabic speakers will have the same mistakes when learning English or or when learning French. So it cannot be general. Another thing is that it was um, difficult to give accurate decisions regarding the issue. You cannot decide 
um, the hierarchy of the difficulty all the time. In some cases as well, errors were observed uh, even in areas of similarities. It's not always about the areas of differences. So what is happening here? If this is an area of similarity, why is the person doing mistakes or errors? However, linguists and researchers suggested that CA actually has an advantage in helping explaining the occurrence of certain errors resulting from a transfer from L1 to L2. This transfer, uh, which you have encountered before, was given a different name later, cross-linguistic influence, which means instances, moments of phonological, that is maybe in pronunciation, lexical, the words used, grammatical forms, or other aspects of transfer from one language um, to another, which we have um, talked about before as positive or negative transfer. It was later called cross-linguistic influence and interference is part of this. Um, now, the whole contrastive analysis approach led us to the error analysis approach. Um, linguists moved from predicting errors and where errors will happen into explaining errors and why they are happening. Therefore, um, error analysis approach uh, which bases, uh, bases its, um, um, its um, uh, hypotheses on the interlanguage idea, which I will explain later, was um, suggested by applied linguist Pitt Corder in the 1960s, so that uh, it was after the contrastive analysis. It depended on a learner's own contribution to errors. Um, it's not only about areas of difficulty and similarities. Um, learners had this unique contribution to the mistakes they do. Um, they, there is the concept of overgeneralizing, and we also have to be careful about types and frequency of errors that happen in, lang in second language learning. Therefore, the, an the error analysis approach to L2 acquisition involves describing, classifying errors, that is collecting errors and then describing them and classifying them in order to understand why the learner is um, uh, doing these errors and how is uh, the system, uh, the underlying knowledge, the system of the learner uh, functioning. To begin with, let's look into Corder's definition. Um, Cordier argued that of errors argued that errors are important in providing a glimpse into the learning process to understand how second language learning happen. We should understand the errors and how they happen. He said, a learner's errors are significant in that they provide to the researcher evidence of how the language is learned or acquired, what strategies are being used by the learner in the discovery of the language. That is, an important development during this period was recognizing learner language as a true system with, with its own regularities, its own rules. Each learner has this unique system uh, of acquiring the language, and they called it the inter-language. Memorize it this way, inter, that is inter inside your own uh, language system. So it's a linguistic system of the target language. You were not talking about first language. We we're always talking about second language acquisition. So while you, while you are learning the second language, you build this linguistic system uh, produced by a learner which differs in systematic ways from that of a native speaker of the target language. That is, let's say you are learning Spanish. When you are learning Spanish, you build this linguistic system that is different from the system that a Spanish person has or um, a person who is born in a Spanish-speaking country. We have our unique interlanguage system. Therefore, many errors happen when learners try to master. You are learning new rules and learning new language. You try to master it, but still you would make certain errors. Therefore, the errors are self-made. Learners tend to also overgeneralize forms from their present understanding of the target language and you know from your own experience. Here miss I'm explaining um, what error analysis talked about, what their hypotheses were. So example, learners of English may overgeneralize the past tense ED, you know this, instead of the, uh, for example we use ED for the past form 
uh, at the end of the verb. However, um, learners might overgeneralize by using the ed form for irregular verbs, like saying I hurted her or I goed um, there yesterday. Then, they focused on the type and frequency of errors. Um, errors are not always the same and the frequency like how many times we do the error also differs um, some learners improve while others fall behind you know that from your experiences um, as students and as teachers uh, there's always a change in the language development and early errors differ from later errors you know from your own experience that your errors when you were a child in grade uh, one or grade three are different from when you were in intermediate school or high school and they are different from your errors right now when you are talking or writing in english um, therefore uh, errors are always um, in development they are always changing and um, analyzing the, the types and frequency of errors allowed um, EA linguists to understand language acquisition better. Therefore, Pitt uh, Corder drew attention toward what was referred as the creative construction um, of the interlanguage in learners. And uh, to understand errors, he proposed certain procedures, um, uh, ways to uh, understand what is happening when it comes to error analysis. The following table is available on page 66 if you would like to read it from the book and um, highlight. It's the same thing that is here. Um, Corder followed five steps of error analysis. Uh, during the session, our live session, I will give you a sample that we will analyze and follow these steps. Number one, collection of learner language. They would uh, get a corpus that is a sum of uh, written products of the learner to know what their original uh, language level is. Identification of errors. Then they would identify the errors. Are the errors um, because of lack of knowledge or, um, uh, um, or are they just momentary forgetfulness or mistakes? And there are numbers uh, of uh, problems that can arise to determine what actually constitutes an error. What is an error? Three, describing the error. Is it an error in the sentence structure? Something is added or missing or replaced or the, or the order of the sentence is wrong? Or is it a different type of error um, uh, that is um, the approach of some linguists classifying errors according to errors in phonology, vocabulary, morphology, or syntax? Step four is explaining the error itself. Um, is the error because of transfer from L1 or is it developmental that is like overgeneralization? It's an error that uh, the type is, uh, is changing with time or not, the frequency is changing or not. Evaluation of errors. After all this is done, they evaluate. Does the error have an effect on communication? on the conversation, Rihanna, if someone is saying this sentence and they do this error, would it interfere with comprehension? Would the person listening or reading that piece um, misunderstand? Is the error that big and affecting understanding? Because after all, this is the main purpose uh, of language is communication. So if the error does not affect communication, um, is it an important error? Therefore, as a summary of the EA um, approach, they focused on the creative processes of uh, developing the language, uh, and this creative process is unique to a learner and it guides their uh, language development. Errors can give an idea about the learners developing interlanguage, um, learners ongoing attempts to acquire a new language, they build the system of the interlanguage. However, one of the shortcomings of the EA approach, as always, is that it focuses too much on errors and forgetting about what uh, learners are able to do correctly, kind of negative um, aspect of the um, approach. Learners also find ways to avoid certain structures or patterns. Sometimes they might have a difficulty, however, they avoid it so they don't do an error. And you know from your own experience how sometimes you might change the word in order not to use it wrong, or you may change the whole sentence structure, use different words in order not to make a mistake in the structure. This is the error analysis. We are done with these two theories. Um, next week, I will begin with other theories. Thank you for listening and good luck.